Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a hot take on uh, the situation. Let's say Trump slams McConnell for blocking vote on 2,000 stimulus checks. Yeah, pretty dumb move. Um, this is from Axios. Um, you know, the Republicans, uh, most of them are rhinos. What are you going to do? Uh, these, these guys don't care about you. Uh, they care about their various things overseas because they're probably double dipping and getting a chunk of the money uh, or it greases the palm of somebody. So they're doing what they always do. Spend, spend, spend. Um, Trump's 2,000 checks all but dead as GOP. Senate refuses aid. Um, now, there is one glimmer of hope that McConnell rewrote the stimulus package to include knocking off 230 protections and investigating voter fraud, but I think those are bad moves um, because if they remove 230 protections entirely, you will see the death of all the competing alt media, except the stuff that's outside the United States, ironically. And if you... Uh, you know, the stop the election fraud thing, it's probably just going to be a cosmetic sort of, well, we investigated ourselves and found we did nothing wrong. So I, I wouldn't hold out hope for any of that. Um, but federal judge lashes out at Trump, calls him a criminal. A federal judge unleashed a diatribe against President Trump, calling him a criminal in statements that are being seen as violations of ethic rules for the judiciary. Yeah, I would say so. And I, you know, assuming uh, Trump's not involved in the case, <laughs> it was an Associated Press reporter who interviewed Robert Pratt, a federal judge in the Southern District of Iowa, who is now on either senior status or and carries a reduced workload. Pratt claimed it's not surprising that a criminal like Trump pardons other criminals, uh, but apparently to get a pardon, one either has to be a Republican or a convicted child murderer or a turkey. It's a bit bit much. Uh, Pratt was referring to pardons Trump granted to his former campaign aides convicted during special counsel, counsel's a Russian inquiry, former GOP congressmen who committed crimes and security contractors involved in killing of innocent civilians in Iraq. Trump also pardons turkeys this year from Iowa annually before Thanksgiving. Uh, Pratt was appointed to the bench by Bill Clinton in 1997. So, you know, it, it's just more partisan rhetoric. Uh, but the big news today is Senator Joss Hawley says he will object to the Electoral College certification. And this is a good thing. But keep in mind that these politicians know how to wait, at least the good ones do. So uh, Hawley may have waited just long enough to convince himself that Trump cannot win, but that he could uh, do this vote, uh, you know, knowing that it's going to do nothing, and uh, then score a bunch of points with the uh, GOP base. Now, or, now that may not be true. It may be that he genuinely likes Trump and uh, feels this way. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to knock the guy, but I want you to consider that it may be politicking as well because it's a long shot that the debate would do anything because the debate what it would do is drive a vote in congress that trump would lose that vote he would lose there's not enough people in congress there's not enough pressure on congress you would have to flip the house and uh, uh right now that looks you know, you don't even have all the Republicans on board. You don't even have all the senators on board. You could, conceivably, you could get a vote in the Senate to go Trump's way. But uh, not in the House right now. So, and I'm not exactly sure which senators and House members would actually get the vote. Because I don't think they're sworn in until later. So, I'm not sure who's in and who's out and who votes and who doesn't vote at this point. But... It is a positive sign. Um, we'll see how it goes. At least we'll get a debate on the, on the subject. Uh, Mitch McConnell 
Oh, here, here's the other one. Mitch McConnell introduces 2,000 COVID checks, but ties it with repeal of big tech's immunity law and creation of election fraud panel and poison pen package deal doomed to fail. Yeah, I think it did, but uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't followed that much. I mean, it's all, it's all a bunch of politicking nonsense, you know. Um, I don't think you're going to get this uh, unless, of course, big tech is ready to jettison 230 immunities, which they will be soon because they have the technology to just impose their algorithms and they'll be fine and all their competitors will be dead in the water. Um, True the Vote calls on GA judge Stacey Abrams, sister to recuse herself after voter eligibility ruling. So this is how things are going in Georgia. I had no idea Stacey Abrams' sister was a judge. Um, and she voted, uh, well, she made a ruling uh, against, surprise, surprise, uh, Donald Trump and for Joe Biden. Seems uh, a bit sus, if you ask me. Um, but, you know, considering her sister's very high-profile status in the rival party, Seems a bit sus. Uh, Pentagon fires back at Joe Biden. DOD has been completely transparent. So, um, you know, Biden's not getting the info he wants. Uh, so, you know, it's a little, again, it's hard, it's hard to read here. It may be that the Pentagon genuinely wants to cooperate with the Biden transition team and just is slow about it. Um, but uh, is the Biden team actually going to be doing a bunch of stuff when it gets in in the first hundred days? I mean, I, I, I guess they're going to try, but, you know, the Obama era wasn't exactly a, you know, nonstop get things done era. In fact, people kept uh, shilling for Obama saying, ooh, give him some time. It's only been the first hundred days. That's, that's the way they shilled for Obama while he got nothing done. You know, the press was just like, oh, it's too early. You got to give him 100 days before you can even criticize him. Uh, I suspect that's what Biden's going to do as he tries to mask everybody up and lock us all down. Uh, Rich Grinnell, the America First policy is never going back in the bottle. Good for you, Rich. Good for you. Uh, he was the former director of national intelligence, former acting director. And... Um, he is likely to be a candidate for something in the not too distant future, probably president. I mean, he's got the good look for it. Um, it would be pretty cool if he was the first gay candidate for president over the Repu over the Democrats. Um, you know, he was the he's really the head of the log cabin Republicans at this point, and uh, they're very seems to me they seem to be very populist uh and that makes sense that they would be right because you know the log cabin cabin republicans are gay and um they're not going to be your average republicans they're they're very wary of the status quo because of the way the old guard treated them they want the new guard so uh i think you know a guy like him in the party is a good thing uh keeps keeps um Keeps the Democrats for call for calling uh, use it, calling the GOP or the old names, uh, but they haven't quite gotten it through their thick heads that this is a different GOP party. This is a populist party, and there there'll be a, a civil war in the GOP over this. But the difference being that I think this time uh, the populists are going to win because unlike the Democrats. Um, who had sort of a faux champion in Bernie Sanders. Um, you know, once Bernie went down, that was it. They were done. Trump hasn't gone down. Trump has won. And Trump is still, you know, still a viable candidate. He still uh, has most of his credibility. I mean, you could yell at him for this COVID bill, but, you know, what's he going to do at this point? And finally, POW, election something... <laughs> it says, I'm just reading the headline uh, at OAN uh, YouTube. Powell election fraud now obvious because President Trump's landslide victory broke Dominion votes, which algorithm, which according, you know, according to most people, honk, honk, wink, wink, uh, that's not true. 
So, yeah. Uh, I can't say certain things on YouTube, so. Attorney Sidney Powell recently gave a detailed interview on the evidence of electoral fraud after releasing a 270-page summary of her investigation. So, you can listen to that at OAN, of course. So, OAN will probably be, I think, the winner in terms of the new Fox News. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see where Trump goes in that, if he is not president, uh, in the coming weeks. Whether he will go to OAN and just buy it, <laughs> or just be on it all the time, or Newsmax, or both, somehow. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards OAN. They seem a little more pure in that area. Um, but I probably can't read most of this because of YouTube's algorithm or whatever. So check it out on OAN. And, uh, you know, it's it's probably stuff you've already heard of, heard anyway. You know, I, think, I think we're all in agreement, those of you watching this channel, of what the election was going to like you know it was totally wonderful and 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 perfectly secure the most secure election ever honk honk wink wink uh <laughs> so um yeah and then um final note but i don't have it pulled up linwood is blasting mike pence uh on twitter saying that you should uh um tweet at mike pence and say hey Remember, if you're going to ever run for election again to support Trump. Because I honest, you know, he's saying that Pence is more worried about running in 2024. I honestly don't see how he could be that stupid, blind, and arrogant to think that he could run in 2024 if he does not support the president. If he does not support Trump in this last move, there is no way. There's no way he will go down quicker than Fox News. No one will vote for him. He won't even rate if he runs for president uh, with the GOP. Won't even rate. Absolutely won't. Um, so, you know, I can't imagine he doesn't know that. But there are a lot of egomaniacs in Washington, D.C., right? I mean, he might actually think that. So it would probably be good to drop him a little line on his Twitter or email and say, hey, if you don't support Trump on January 6th, you, I'm not voting for you. You know, even if he just steps away and says, I'm not doing it, you guys sort it out. Or I can't tell. I can't tell. I genuinely can't tell. I mean, I, again, I think that's our best option. I don't think Pence is going to flip the vote to Trump. I really don't. Because he'd be flipping it for himself and it would look horrendous. But I do think he could <laughs> throw up his hands because of all the pressure and just say, there is no way I'm, I'm uh, you know, certifying Biden. There's just no way. There's too much shenanigans going on in the election. Uh, I'm just going to dump it on you and now it's your problem, Congress. I think that's something he could do. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of arguments back and forth. Um, if he doesn't count them. So, I mean, it could go... Uh, another option H.A. Uh, Goodman was talking about, it could go down to the next person. Uh, like, Pence could leave town and <laughs> refuse to do it. And then it goes to, I think, Chuck Grassley, who might be a little more open to it. I don't know. I don't know much about Grassley, but, um, uh, you know, H.A. Goodman is a little, little more hopeful than most, if you've ever seen his YouTube channel. Although he seems pretty resigned that we're going to get four years of Biden. But uh, as I said, I'm on the Trump train until the wheels fall off. And even then, I think uh, Trump's going to be around um, and there'll be a, a, a comeback if, if we have to do that. And there's a lot of chatter in the QAnon circles about this all being the plan, and that's all going to happen on January 6th, uh, no one would be happier than, than me if that happens. Do I believe it? Man, it seems like a, I, I, I don't see Trump's allies. I, I literally don't see enough people in Washington to help Trump. You know, I just don't see it. Um, 
you know, I, with his with his fans showing up J January sixth. I mean, those people will love Trump, of course, but um, you know, actual people in Washington with in the levers of power. I don't know, unless he's been really, and and there's some evidence to suggest he's been compartmentalizing the Department of Defense and military away from everything else. So if he has the military on his side and pulls some trigger and says, okay, uh, Biden and his crew is going to jail, you know, I, I think he could do it, but I don't see it. But in order for it to work, I think it would have to be secret. So... There you go. I hope it. I hope that's the case. I genuinely do, but I'm a little pessimistic about it. So we'll see what happens on January 6th when the greatest reality show in history comes to a conclusion.